You're listening to DraftKings Network. Today's episode is brought to you by The Bike Riders, a new film from Jeff Nichols starring Jodie Comer, Austin Butler, and Tom Hardy. Inspired by true events, The Bike Riders follows Benny, Austin Butler, the newest member of Midwestern Motorcycle Club, The Vandals, led by the enigmatic Johnny, Tom Hardy. Critics are calling it electrifying, stunning, exhilarating, powerful, and the godfather of biker movies. Experience The Bike Riders on the big screen this summer, only in theaters June 21st. Visit thebikeridersfilm.com to get tickets now. Now's a good time to remember where the story of tequila started. In 1795, the first tequila distillery was opened by the Cuervo family. And 229 years later, Cuervo is still going strong. Family owned from the start. Same family, same land. Now's a good time to enjoy Cuervo. The tequila that invented tequila. Go to Cuervo.com to shop tequila or visit a store near you. Cuervo. Now's a good time. Trademarks owned by Beckley. SAB, the CV. Copyright 2024. Proximo. Jersey City, New Jersey. Please drink responsibly. Chris, do you think that I'm correct when I say that everyone around here a little bit hides their sports hurt because they don't want America to drink up their tears? <laughs> so there's a stoicism involved with everyone here when there is hurting. And I noticed it on the way in, oddly enough. It wasn't even about the Panthers this weekend. When I pulled in, Stugatz waddled out from behind one of the parking garage pillars. Yeah. And, you know, he's confirmed. Covered in cigarette smoke. And I it waddled. Makes me a little bit uh, sad when I see it in the morning because he, he doesn't you have. smile this morning. I, I did mean. smile, but I was laughing at how uh, sad it was it that is. you continue to smoke in a parking garage instead of going and doing it somewhere where there's sunshine. Yeah. But what I saw on you, yeah. I think hiding behind the stoicism was heartbreak. But I'm not totally positive because you guys do such a good job of concealing when you're hurting. I saw that your daughter's team was up 5 or 6 nothing. They were and, up 6 nothing. yeah. And thought they were going to win easily another championship at Northwestern. And then next thing I know, Boston College has won the lacrosse national championship by a goal. Uh, second time in, I think, three or four years, BC has won. 6 nothing is not a big lead in that sport, especially in the first quarter. Uh, but I am hurting today. Like, that hurt. Um, to see my daughter emotional after the game, to see her crying after the game. And really, you know, because I've gotten to know her teammates and those families very, very well, that's a terrible way for for this season and some of their careers to end. So, yeah, I'm hurting today. I don't care. I'll tell you. I'm hurting today. I'm hurting for them. Yep. If you make the final four every year, is it that painful when you lose? I mean, geez. It is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I cry all the time, so I really don't know what you're talking about. I have cried so many times on camera from both happiness and a lot from sadness, too. So I'm not hiding anything. I would agree that you are less concealed than most, but I think Stugatz uh, greeted me today by telling me, Today's the day we find out whether Roy's actually concerned or not. Because it's the, he's uh, always question, yeah. he's always hiding. Yes. Uh, I can answer that question right now. No. What? I'm if, not. Come if, on, Roy. If, if I can speak for the other end of that spectrum, I've been shitting myself every three hours for two days. Hmm. I can't remember in my entire history covering sports in this market a non season ending game that felt as bad as what just happened to the Panthers. It's not that you lost or lost the second time in overtime in, a, in you know this, in as many games. Derek White in the Eastern Conference uh, yeah. Finals last year oh, to, to send it to one. a Game 7. That's yeah. a good one. Because yes. i got to tell you, in my mind, fairly recent example, four outweighs what I felt in, in Game 3 of uh, Panthers-Rangers. It, it's a good one, but the reason I want to talk about this is because usually these things are reserved for Game 6 and Game 7. The thing that I was going to say as the qualifier is I've never felt that way that early in a series about anything. Game three, you don't remember any game threes in the history of game threes. None of you do. Huh. You don't remember any of them. I love that as a trick. <laughs> it's a great Go, trick. Remember a game yes. three. Uh, game three, I dare you. And then move on like while well, my head's still spinning trying to find a game three. Because I'm certain over the 20 years of us doing this show, Mike, we have spoken about a big game three. Uh, positive. There I just can't remember it today. There was a Cal Lowry yeah. 
A Kyle Lowry full court buzzer beater to force a Raptors Heat series into overtime. And if that's a game three, that's your winner. I have a hard time coming up with one early in a series that felt like that one because it's not just that you lose in overtime. You completely dominated the game. Like it, the, To have that kind of shot advantage in a game hadn't been seen in how many years in that sport in the playoffs where you don't lose that game. A team with that kind of shot advantage never loses that game. Uh, let's start the show, show so I can get to my top five most heartbreaking things South Florida has felt. Whoa. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. I meant to address this a couple of weeks ago when Ken Rosenthal, voice for baseball, said that everyone in baseball was talking about how something finally had to be done about Angel Hernandez. Uh, when Ken Rosenthal uh, stakes his voice and bow tie as the voice of baseball <laughs> on running someone out of the sport, it then happens soon thereafter. So congratulations to all uh, Hispanics who have uh, known that Angel Hernandez has been a blight upon our people with his general incompetence for 30 years umpiring baseball games. But it appears that they finally settled. They negotiated with Angel <laughs> Hernandez and one of the most powerful unions in the history of unions, not just sports. And they said, Angel, not one more game this season. Mm. You are retiring right now. You are announcing your retirement. We're not even going to go anymore. It's going to be in the middle of the season. It's not even going to have any explanation for why it is right now. You're not getting worse. You've always been the worst, and now we're deciding <laughs> you have to retire in a settlement. I can't imagine how much money that man got. We're going to miss that man. I'm telling you right now, it's hard to see it today, but I'm telling you next year, a couple of years down the road, we are going to miss Angel Hernandez on this show. We're going to miss talking about Angel Hernandez. We are. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Are we going to miss Angel <laughs> Hernandez terribly? And also put on the poll, do you want to celebrate profound incompetence? Yes. Because I was like Draymond Green with Rudy Gobert. Uh, Draymond Green is really celebrating because Jerkic and Gobert are going to get swept, and he's just making the rounds hating everywhere. He is America's foremost hater right now. Put up the clip for us, please, of him reacting to what is happening in that Minnesota and Dallas series where everyone is watching the Defensive Player of the Year, four-time Defensive Player of the Year, get hunted and uh, get picked on Stugatz in a way that creates uh, great merriment and joy throughout <laughs> the sport because it would appear that everyone hates Gobert. And I got to think, right? I don't know enough about what has been happening in previous years versus this year as to how it is that Gobert gets played off the court, but he's not getting played off the court. They're just hunting the defensive player of the year, which I don't have any precedent for. Like, So he's not getting played off the court, but they're losing because he's out there, and he needs to not be out there. Did you guys see the face on McDaniels when they went to the switch on defense? The slow motion face when he just went oh no, because he realized it was Luka on Gobert. And even Jamal Crawford is telling you before it happens this is going to be a step back three right in Gobert's face because Gobert hasn't been able to cover Luka Doncic on any continent that they've played on. <laughs> Isn't Anthony Edwards like totally skating on this? Yes. I mean, he was yep. pounding his chest about what he did in the previous series to Jamal Murray. I'm out there. I'm a lockdown defender. And the fact that they have to turn to him, granted they're hunting him to a very large degree, but the fact that these highlights don't have Anthony Edwards draped all over Luka Doncic makes me realize that was, that was a lot of talk there, bro. Well, he did say he wanted Kyrie yeah. in the last series. Well, And Stephen A. right now is saying on ESPN on the televisions in here that Anthony Edwards is the reason they're losing that series because he's not guarding Kyrie. But to me, the funny thing about Game 3 is Anthony Edwards is in the tunnel getting an oxygen while Luca's smoking a cigarette running up and down the court. Like, put it on the pole, please. Are you sure Luca's in shape? 
<laughs> I don't know what to do with Luca because he's one of those guys. You know, they said earlier he was injured. I don't know if he's injured because he always looks injured. And so I have no idea what to do with Luka Doncic. It's convenient now that people aren't talking about the injury because they're up 3-0. He's playing so well. But he is one of those guys, Dan, and he annoys me because I have no idea. There is no way of knowing, not even doctors know, whether or not Luka is hurt. He always looks hurt. <laughs> he does. I, I I saw a Lucas Stan account tweet out that nobody has a has is holding opposing players to a better field goal percentage from the field. And then I dug deeper and I saw minimum two hundred field goal attempts. <laughs> like what great defender has that many? And this was like around game <laughs> one of the Western Conference Finals. I don't think any other defender had two hundred attempts uh, on them in this postseason. But yeah, Lucas a really strange case study and even when he was a little bit younger coming out of Real Madrid and in better shape, he still looked out of shape by comparison. I think it's why he didn't go number one. One of the things that I'm going to enjoy so much about these finals, Stugatz, because Dallas is as improbable a team as has ever arrived in this position. But if I could get the great good fortune of the greatest Boston team I've seen this century, I'm including their champion in there, mm -hmm. playing not only against Kyrie Irving, but the white guy they've been dying to have throughout eternity in Boston, to have those two players. <laughs> well, they had them. Those two play. <laughs> well, they had Kyrie, and then Kyrie <laughs> saged the place and stepped on the leprechaun. Uh, I, uh, I was talking to you guys before the show, and I was asking about like where the Mavericks would rank on improbable champions, Dugats, because I did not have this being possible, even seeing after the trade deadline that they were uh, you know, one of the best defenses in the sport. This is a giant surprise to me. I am not used to giant surprises in this sport. For all the people who were talking all year about who can win the championship, I heard precious little talk about Dallas. Five seeds don't win the championship. You don't have a team that wins just 50 games winning the championship. You had a six seed, and the Rockets do it in, I think, 93-94. So a six seed got to the NBA Finals. Eight seeds have been to the NBA Finals. You know, the Heat did it last year. Right? No, not getting there. Not but getting winning there. the entire Win thing. Winning right. it. Uh, yes. the, the Rockets it wasn't not a lot of precedent for getting there. The only precedent for getting there as an eight seed was right. a lockout shortened yes. Knicks team yeah. that was hurt all year and wasn't a true eight. Right. So you you say, Dan, that you're not used to seeing it in this sport. I'd say the last six years says get used to it because the last six years in NBA yeah. history seems like a huge historical outlier. It has changed. The sport has changed because of all the offense, but five seeds are still not champions very often. And you just mentioned the Rockets uh, as a six seed. Those Rockets were the defending champion. They coasted through the following season. They had Hakeem Elijah on. It was 93, 94, 94, 95. It was the two years Jordan took off. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. it was. So they, so got, they don't they, count. They got I mean. there and won it with right. a championship right. pedigree. It would right. have been more shocking if it was year one because you'd already seen that nucleus do it but I, I would say yeah like just comb through the teams that have made the finals and have won the finals in the last six years the fact that we're not really getting any repeat appearances the fact that dynasties are dying shortly thereafter or presumed dynasties are dying shortly thereafter it's a it's a crazy time I can't really wrap my head around it you just got to take every season as a, as a new thing can carry over back streets back all right since the dawn of mankind We've cooked our food over an open flame and debated the best way to grill. One thing not up for debate, grilling and beer always go together. But not just any beer would do. Whether you barbecue, Texas style, or just celebrate Wednesday with burgers and dogs. I love Miller Lite. Every single time my team plays on television, I am sitting behind that television screen with a Miller Lite or three. Miller Lite keeps it simple. Undebatable quality, tastes as great as your barbecue, it's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters the most. With the Miller Lite in hand, grilling doesn't just taste great, it tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com Dan. Or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. Woo! 
Don Lebatard. I just texted my best friend Hannah and asked her who oh. she thinks is going to win tonight. Wow. And she has never watched a hockey game and? this entire season. She's picking the Rangers. And she's an wow. astrophysicist. She's mm. real smart. I'll text Joey. Dan, you know what I found out about Hannah today? An anagram. Stugatz. You said Anna or Hannah? Hannah. Okay, I don't know. Anna too, depending on how you spell it. <laughs> Phil Even McCarthy. though if there's two ends, it's also an anagram. Same with one N, Anna. Anagrams are fun. Hannah Race car. A hanagram. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats. We had uh, the last five seasons. Each of the last five seasons, there's been a three or lower in the finals in basketball. And it is at least in part because of how everything has changed in that sport with three-pointers and offense and the way that the game is played. I pose that, uh, I love the take, we were doing a little cable TV thing. I'm like, I don't, I don't even think it's the most shocking Dallas Mavericks champion of all time. But looking back, the the series against the Miami Heat in 2011 where J.J. Barea was put on LeBron and he refused to back him down, the, uh, the Mavericks entered that series at plus 160, I think, um, it's tough to find a line on that right now. You have the line with three teams. Keep in mind, the Mavericks haven't actually advanced just yet, but I think it'll settle in somewhere around plus 160 for Dallas. Do any of you listening to this have a comp for what Luka is? Because um, Paul Pierce's game often confused me, but Stan Van Gundy is saying that this is the best offensive backcourt ever and that Luka is the best offensive player that there has been in the history of the sport. And I am confounded. I understand that after the game, when he's shaking hands with Travis Kelsey, you realize he's bigger than Travis Kelsey. And, and just because he's out there with Giants, you can forget that this is a six, seven, thick, strong person who is handling the entirety of the game. But the fact that I can't tell you for sure whether he's in prime shape or not, <laughs> and Stugatz can't tell you for sure whether he's hurt no or not. No idea, yeah. Uh, I thought after seeing their first game against the Clippers, I'm like, Luke is not going to last these playoffs. Like, he's just not going to be healthy enough. And then all of the other teams break down. The Celtics, I believe... Uh, the Celtics have had, what, eight of their 12 uh, victories have come against uh, teams that don't have their number one player? That's right. And Luka is going through a buzzsaw in the West. Like, every every team in the top four out West, I thought, could have won the championship. The one in the, in the top five that I didn't have winning the championship was Dallas. Hmm. Because I didn't have them getting past a healthy Clippers team. You fell for the thunder? I mean... I did, yes. You did, all right. And, and furthermore, can you guys get me that sound from a couple of weeks ago, please, of Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards laughing about the idea that a reporter asked them, hey, you guys haven't suffered enough in the postseason. You haven't done enough losing. And their reaction was to laugh at him and say, what do you mean? We've done plenty of losing. No, this is what losing and suffering feels like. <laughs> Not losing in the first round. Historically in this sport, what's happening to them this year where you go from Anthony Edwards being celebrated for two rounds to spending an offseason with, hey, what happened? And we were ready to anoint you. And instead, Luca came and took your league. Like, took your league for from you. Kyrie and Luca took your moment from you. I was not ready to anoint him. Anyone who anointed him should be should be ashamed of themselves. But Dan, the Celtics are going through it. That's what we're talking about. That's going deep into the playoffs and not getting it done. And that's what the Celtics are going through and have been going through for the last eight years now. They've been to the Eastern Conference Finals six of the last eight years. They've been to the NBA Finals. They haven't gotten it done. That's losing. That's going through some pain before you actually hold up the Larry O'Brien. I've heard a lot of people compare Luka to Patrick Mahomes. That seems like an in vogue comparison. I'm going to go to soccer and Diego Maradona because his body didn't make sense for how good he was on the pitch. But he had this motor that wouldn't stop and no one could figure out why that was. A lot of first basemen's. A lot of first basemen's on these Luka comps. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Prince Fielder. Yep. John Cruck. I'm talking about basketball where athleticism is obviously required. <laughs> and clearly, is it? I mean, this, Stugatz, <laughs> clearly, this is an enormously athletic person. I mean, it was Jokic last year. I mean, Luka this year. I mean, athleticism, really? I mean, it's overrated. 
I mean, part of the athleticism is also conserving your energy, especially when you're not like of the best wind. Right. <laughs> like Luca yes. is. Like he's yes. just he's got a special quality where he can it's almost as if he's been like out of shape his entire life, so he knows how to win within those margins. And he knows just the enough <laughs> just enough amount of exertion to get a look at the cup. I'm gonna say this again so that you you understand what's happening here. In the fourth quarter of the last game, as the Timberwolves are benching Carl Anthony Towns and everyone's wondering, hey, do you need to bench the defensive player of the year too? Five minutes left in the fourth quarter in a series that Minnesota has had the lead in every fourth quarter. Anthony Edwards is in the tunnel getting oxygen because of how Kyrie and Luka are beating you down. They're beating you down on... What's happening at the end of games? The things that you the – th we said before this postseason started, we're okay seeing Minnesota can't win, not just because they haven't suffered, because young teams don't win like that. They don't win at the end of games. They do knucklehead shit. They're, they're, they've got to learn how to do that. So, Stugatz, this is Carl Anthony Towns during better times and Anthony Edwards telling us, what do you mean we've got to suffer and lose in the playoffs in order to get to the finals? We've lost. We keep losing in the first round. How much losing do you want us to do? It, and usually in NBA history, it says you have to lose and lose big before you win. What is it about this team that says we lost play? last year? Yeah, but that, that, that's different. You have to lose at a bigger stage. Usually teams. Usually it's the playoffs. Win. We lost last year. <laughs> we lost the last two years. <laughs> God damn. How much more we got to lose? Yeah, how much you want us to lose? We've been losing for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth, dog. God damn. I think he gets it now. Yeah. How much more you got to lose? One more game. One more. One yeah, more. One more it. series generally, yeah. historically speaking. The reporter wins. I mean, he has to feel vindicated today. No? Vince uh, Vince Goodwill is the reporter. Uh, Vince. Uh, the idea that Luca is wearing them down with his <laughs> wind and his athleticism and just his general frustrating because what the hell are you supposed to do? You can have everything lined up for the two players that they have in their backcourt and it doesn't matter at all. And they are swamping. Anthony Edwards has the dunk of the year, the play of the year. In this series, he had the dunk of the playoffs where you're like, congratulations yeah. to him. He was already a star entering this year, but he's a breakout <laughs> superstar from the, the season and the way that the postseason shook out. And Luka just stays even. Just, he's always this confusing, this confusing guy that finds a way to get buckets or make plays, and you can't. And you're you're left scratching your head. And we we struggled last year in the last couple of years with Jokic, but we at least can see like okay, he can move inside too. He can get the easy buckets. There's no real hole in his game because if he goes to the line, he'll do it. It's really weird to see it constantly on the perimeter, and you have like some of the game's most most athletic, best defenders try to take their shot at cracking this code, and no one really can. There are a couple of things that I find super interesting about this, Dugats. A, Minnesota shut down a Denver team offensively that I did not think could be shut down by anybody, and it doesn't matter when you face this backcourt. And the other thing that's happening in this series, and this is something that was camouflaged over the first two rounds. You guys didn't trust Carl Anthony Towns. You didn't. And now you know why. Mm -hmm. This is one of the worst shooting performances I've ever seen, and it is statistically one of the worst that there's ever been. What he's shooting from three is what's getting him benched. His coach is saying it's hard to watch, that it's hard to watch my second-best player run around out there, and he knows he's not going to make anything. Is he four for 32 from three? I think it's it, it, he is something from three that is the worst there's ever been on that many shot attempts from three. Usually in the postseason, people will stop shooting if they're shooting as poorly as Carl uh, Anthony Towns is shooting. Because, he is three of 22. I mean. <laughs> okay, so I'm going back five games. This is the worst five-game stretch we've ever seen from a three-point shooter in the postseason in this league. It's 4-4-32 four, four, because we're going back a ways. And so the Timberwolves won anyway. They they beat Denver anyway with him playing that way, but uh, what a bizarre roster construction for the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, they're dying to get this Hardaway contract off their books. They are like they they can set themselves up nicely. I know and I know it's not sexy, but they have some bigs that can appear to be really versatile defenders and have, are huge into their success. And 
I always have to Google what their names are. The most impressive part about the Mavericks is that they had Luka Doncic and they completely revamped their roster around him in the last year and a half. They made the trade for Kyrie at the in deadline the last in, year. in 2023. Yes. And since then, they've added Gafford and Washington at this last deadline. They added Derek Jones Jr. in free agency. I think it's their second. I can second... hear your heat homerism through this. This is what the heat should do for Jimmy. What? It... No. no, come on. That is kind of what you're saying. Uh, th- he was getting somewhere good, man. No, 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 that, but that wasn't that I let wasn't him fair. cook. I didn't go in too you early. I'm no, saying he was about to go You pulled that pot out so too early. Yeah, you didn't couldn't, let him cook. You stopped couldn't cooking. Where is he going with Derek Jones Jr.? I was you curious. Hear the, the food is still raw. <laughs> I'm the only one that heard the heat analysis there. You, well, once you, just you said, said Derek Jones Jr. Jones Jr. He said, did you see that they took a star and they put a bunch of things around him to improve the roster? What I saw is that he had started to cook. He had put a few things out. He had tenderized a little bit the chicken. He had marinated a little bit and then you took all the ingredients off the no table i let before. him go yeah. you didn't he, he was not allowed to cook lucy was he allowed to cook did you no. feel like jeremy was allowed to cook no there? please just let jeremy be okay just let him live his <laughs> life if he wants to sneak a little heat stuff in there i felt like i didn't i didn't pick lucy up on it at all come on lucy no i didn't lucy you heard it chris don't do this to me i'm bad in confrontation my parents are divorced i can't pick again <laughs> you mentioned the mavericks roster construction uh luca's up for five years 346 million and Kyrie's going to be up for four years 243 million so they're about to give 600 million dollars to both of those guys over the next four can years can you believe we're here with Kyrie? no where where it's okay well we got to get him his money we, we got to pay Kyrie. this was never the thought this is a contract that's changed hands several times over. I have seen many times over the years. Allen Iverson was the one that I remember most clearly, where we were just crushing him, crushing him, crushing him, crushing him, and then he made it to the finals, and we're like, did Allen change? And it's like, no, not, not really. <laughs> He's just winning. <laughs> He's just winning now, and when you start winning, we will change the way that we talk about you. And all of that said, Kyrie Irving has been maximum professional for them since he got there. He was humbled by everything that happened there, and this is the most circuitous route he could have possibly taken to. I'll show you what I can do when I break free of LeBron James. He took the route that was all over the place and got to the place in the most unconventional of ways because all of us would have had it happening in Boston and Brooklyn before it happened in Dallas. Yeah, but are we forgetting it didn't happen in Boston and it didn't happen in Brooklyn? Like, the best Boston team was the team where Kyrie got hurt. They went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Then he decided, with Kevin Durant, to go to the Brooklyn Nets. And it was so bad. They made such a mockery of the entire situation that he was shipped off to but Dallas. But all of this gets forgotten by the excellence of what you're presently witnessing. Because there's nothing in sports better than a surprise. There's nothing better than the underdog uh, surprise. And this is what they are. And whether you like him or not, there is not any disputing that his play has been excellent. He's taking turns with Luka. Why is Luka not tired at the end of games? Because Kyrie is doing shit with the ball handling that Anthony Edwards doesn't have someone else to do uh, outside of you know Mike Conley, who you can't trust at 37, to create all sorts of offense. But are we certain that Luka's tired at the end of games? That's what I'm trying to tell you. We have no way of knowing. I have, Luka is the most annoying basketball player. He's the guy that walks into the gym. He's complaining about his knee he's got a knee brace on he's complaining about the shoulder he's complaining about everything he looks like he's hurt he can't jump and he lights you up for 40 points I can't stand that guy with a cigarette in his mouth you should love that Uh, Luca had 21 in the fourth (laughs) Kyrie had 21 in the fourth the Timberwolves had 20 in the fourth Mm -hmm. Uh, what combined their two points yeah, when you put them together, together, excuse me. When you Luca and Kyrie together had 21 points in the fourth. They've been alternating what they're doing in the fourth quarter, Stugatz. Yeah, they're, but Kyrie was supposed to be a number one, and he's not. Like, Iverson did that as a number one with Eric Snow. Like, that's who Iverson did that with. He got to the NBA Finals. Kyrie has never been a number one and led a team to an NBA Finals or an NBA Championship. You're going to find ways LeBron. To, yes, criti- I am. to criticize Kyrie Dan, Irving the way that he's Dan, presently playing. Because he attaches himself to these guys, and then he becomes the number two, and then we praise him when he wins a championship or he gets the NBA Finals. Kyrie's been an utter disappointment his entire career. I don't want to hear about Kyrie. I you're, don't. You're going – you what? are going to complain about someone else being a number two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's supposed to be a number one. I'm supposed to be a number two. Kyrie is supposed to be a number one. 
That's what I'm saying. And he's not. He's never been a number one. The Cavs were awful until LeBron came back, put him in a position to hit one of the biggest shots in NBA history. I mean, this seriously. Is an odd take. One God, play Hall of Fame. I mean, this is an odd take. It's my take. You. I mean, Kyrie's going to be talked about as one of the more confusing players, especially if he Thank if you. he wins this one, because he can be both things. He could be arguably the game's greatest number two ever outside of maybe Kobe Bryant and Scottie Pippen. Yep. But also, Kobe. he's had the opportunities to be the number one, and he's nuked franchises. But he's failed. But, but what, like he's what, killed coaches okay. and nuked franchises. Okay, but in the history of players that size – Almost none have ever been a number one who wins a championship at that size. Like, Isaiah. I like, mean, okay, congratulations Steph, on picking the one. Steph. <laughs> Steph's you know, bigger Steph, than he is. Kyrie's number two the last year before LeBron came back to Cleveland was Dion Waiters. <laughs> so bad what you're doing. How can you turn this into criticizing Kyrie Irving? Like, how can LeBron you t- got to the finals with worse, I'm just saying. I, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, LeBron's yeah. pretty good. He's, he's not, pretty good he's at not basketball. Not he's, not he's not LeBron James. Congratulations, Stugat. You get to be right. Thank you. Kyrie Irving <laughs> is yeah. not LeBron James. Consensus. Wow. Yeah. Feels good on a Monday. <laughs> no one can take that one apart. <laughs> what a weird take from you. With only a few weeks left in the NBA playoffs, no matter which team you're rooting for, there's nothing like witnessing history in person. Use the Game Time app today and lock in your tickets to check out one of the teams that will lift the trophy at the end of the NBA Finals this season. Did you know that the prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off? It's true. I've seen it with my own eyes. Game Time also has killer last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concert, comedy shows, and more. The feature that I love the most on the Game Time app is the ability to see the views from my seat. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Or you can save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats for you. Game Time also has the lowest price guaranteed. With two taps, you'll see the all in pricing, so there aren't any surprises at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Don Lebertard. Yeah, enjoy enjoy a long and fruitful run, Dan. <laughs> what was that voice? A Celtics fan. That was a Celtics fan? Well, it was me. Stugatz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, am- it's amazing. It's amazing to see the mask pulled off and to see you so clearly. What, you, were, you, you were in such good disguise, and I didn't know it was you. But then- It's to me, a Celtics fan. <laughs> this is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugatz. It was very difficult, Stugatz, to win Gas Bag of the Week this week because Bill Simmons got knocked out as Gas Bag of the Week, even though we have audio here of him saying he'd prefer Gabe Vincent's contract to Kyrie Irving's uh, <laughs> contract. Uh, but we have something better than that. Here is Metal Lark's uh, Gas Bag expert of the Week. What happened there? Amin El Hassan is our gas bag of the week because of his analysis when the Celtics traded for Drew Holiday. Going out and get Damian Lillard for Drew Holiday's corpse and some some toenail clippings isn't what are you doing? making this team significantly better. What do you what, mean? What am I doing? I mean, what are you saying? You're calling people crud and toenail clippings, and you just called someone a corpse. No. Hey, you think Drew Holiday is at his peak right now? No, there's a difference there's between a, there, being at your peak and being a corpse. There are a lot of stops between man, those two things. Man, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't that many more stops. Against, <laughs> against the, the Pacers. highest I've ever heard your voice. <laughs> against the Pacers, Drew Holiday, 18 and a half points per game, seven rebounds per game, six assists per game. He had the game winning steal in game three. And according to Stat Mamba on Twitter, he's the first player to average 15, 5, and 5 with a true shooting percentage, over 75% in a conference finals series. The rare sweep that could have been a sweep the other way. Rob Brendamore is probably watching at home saying, that's what I was talking about over there. The Pacers had a 90% win probability in late in those games in three out of the four. 
But the Celtics are doing all the things we questioned about the Celtics headed into the postseason. They're playing great. They're doing it late. And they're I mean, doing it late. Yeah. It's just not the person that we want to see do it late. So Doesn't it's matter. a little confusing. But, yeah, and if you're a Celtics fan, you don't really care if Tatum's the one doing it. You just want to get there. Being a corpse! <laughs> it's very strong to call somebody a corpse who could have won Eastern Conference Finals MVP over Jalen Brown. Like, could have won it over it. Being a corpse! A corpse! This is sneaky because it's not really when, when people were talking over the course of the regular season, when they were giving their opinions on what we might see in the NBA Finals, Boston was always in that conversation, but nobody really, no one really gave Dallas a chance. And if the Celtics finally going for a high-definition NBA title isn't enough of an appeal to get you into the tent, Kyrie going back to Boston, a place where he's been video saging. I mean, this is amazing drama for a sport that has kind of lacked that drama, and, and it's what the NBA does so well. So I'm, I'm in on this NBA Finals. I might have been out on the playoffs, but if it's Dallas-Boston, every game with sound on. Wow. When, wow, the highest compliment. Sound on. Uh, when Mike Ryan says that the Celtics are confusing, here are a couple of things that are going to be hard to get your head around. Right now, Jason Tatum is on pace to have the second most postseason points ever before he's done because he's always there and he's scoring a bunch of points. <laughs> and I do believe people are generally reluctant to give uh, to confer greatness upon this Celtics team, at least in part because there's somewhere in our expectation. I don't know what we're doing here I don't think it's fair no Derek White I don't want you hitting the important shot with Jalen Brown setting it up I want Tatum to do it I want your best player to have to bail out the team in big moments and be better than everybody and I don't think history cares or remembers any of that stuff I don't think it ends up mattering just like history doesn't remember the injuries to got Kawhi Leonard and Toronto have a championship forever and nobody cares that uh, Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant right. were hurt yep. in those Finals. So if the Celtics win the championship, it'll simply be one of the best teams ever. But I do wonder whether or not people will remember it that way because of uh, it not f because it's a new sport. They play the game differently than it's been played. It's and, been an easy and, path. And too. this team has yes. mastered. Yeah, but easy paths to Gantz. I mean, it has been. It, it, it has been an yes. easy path, but it's not like they, they've gone a twelve and two. Right. In, in an easy path. They've lost two times. They have 20 losses headed in to the NBA Finals, and there aren't a whole bunch of teams in the in the sports history that have had 20 or fewer losses headed into the NBA Finals. That's like the Bulls, the Golden State Warriors, those types of teams. They, they heat in 2013. They, they have this. This is what I will say about the Celtics, which is a weird thing to say. They will – if they win the championship, empirically, they will have one of the most dominant seasons that any team has ever had, and it will not be remembered that way. <laughs> and that's just how the sports changed? I don't have a better explanation for you, right? Well, the, the, I think that the offensive numbers probably just skew everything right now, so you can't actually apply the, the proper historical prism. It was like it, it's it's before integration in some sports. Like the, the, the gulf between where the game was in, say, the 90s and where it is now offensively, it's an unrecognizable sport. You have to talk about like pre-merger. You have to talk about it in those terms, pre-merger terms. Only Kobe Bryant, Stugatz, has more playoff points by this age uh, than Tatum and he does a lot of scoring of 35, and then you're like, and show me all the ones you remember. Show me all the ones at the end of games. <laughs> show me all the ones where I had to see him tested, and I was like, oh, you went face-to-face -face with Luca. I know Luca's got it. Whatever that is, I know he's got it. He's not afraid of anything. But Luca has just come and stolen out of nowhere, Stugatz. The thing we were talking about with suffering, he suffered. Like, he has been hurt in the playoffs. We think. <laughs> He's been emotionally hurt in the playoffs, <laughs> physically hurt in the playoffs, and now he sneaks in through the side on, oh, wait a minute. 
Is it going to be the young players that take over the league? Because I don't think of Luke as young. I think of him as 39. That guy. <laughs> I think of him. I don't think of him as he is a young player, but I don't think of him as a young player. He's 25. His body's not. There's a lot on that odometer. That's what I'm saying. He's 25, but there are 100,000 miles on the odometer, and three or four of the lights are on. Three or four of the lights you don't recognize are on. How is he 25? I'm not buying it. It can't be. Luca, put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Is Luca a young player? He's younger than Tatum. Historically, the NBA prime is right around 27 years old. So he still hasn't entered his prime, although his body probably changes the math. Will so. he make it? It'll be the rare 50 50 poll on is he a young player? It's not, it's not that bad, is it? I mean, it, it, he does look boxy. Like when they show the the graphics of like the conference final players to to promote on the lower third, it does like his body looks different. But I guess it's I, I have a very similar build, so I'm like I don't see it. I'm 25. That's how old I am. We are not the same age. We are not the same. Uh, Lucy, congratulations, by the way. I saw that awful announcing uh, voted you as one of the rising newcomers in the American sports media. Nice. Uh, I salute you. Uh, nobody else around here won the award handed out by awful announcing. I'm 35. So. Thank you. You're 35? I'm actually wow. 37. I just because right. 25. I just not a newcomer. Well, Jeremy yeah. just gave you a side eye right now because mm. he thinks he should be one of the up and coming media. I mean, obviously, newcomers. And I don't have an Emmy, so. Hmm. Okay. Case in point. It's not a competition, except that it is. Well, you just made it. And well, I won. It is. It is. Why do you always do that, man? <laughs> I mean, it is a competition. I didn't do it. I didn't give her the side eye. Jeremy gave her the side eye when I saluted her for getting an award. No, no, no. Then you also threw in no one else around here yeah. has done that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the look. I, I, think you, Chris. I think you and I are done winning newcomer awards. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for being so successful. I don't know what you want from me. Quickly apologize for your 20 years of success, Stugatz. I am now going to get to the promised list of the worst oh. that South Florida sports fans have ever felt. Top five. Okay. And I'd like to see if you guys could come up with any more nominees. And these are all season enders, okay? Because I'm telling you that I felt some of what gets felt when a season is closed in that Panther game, specifically Stugatz, because they're the best third-period team in the league. They had 30 shot attempts in the third period. They came back from 4-2 in the third period. They had an advantage on shot attempts of 108 to 43. And then they lose the game, and it's in a pathetic way. It's Bobrovsky, like, calling for, please, please. It's Bobrovsky. The goal's behind him. We gotta, I can't see. Yeah, we gotta, we got to mill about here to see if they go to review and give us a freebie as Bobrovsky whimpers, allowing his fifth goal that somebody gave him an elbow when nobody gave him an elbow and it wasn't any kind of interference and it was just it was it just made me terribly sad for panther fans <laughs> they're down 2-1 against the rangers no but dan's so right we're, I mean, we're down 4-2 going into that period we get two goals so you could think but you could think right there this is a good period i'll take overtime but no the final 10 minutes the amount of chances the deflation that we felt from not getting that go-ahead goal in that third I felt like we lost right there. The place was ready to erupt. So, guys, here's what you have happening in this series. Well, half the place because half of, of the Rangers season fans. ticket Rangers holders fans, made yeah. a decision mm -hmm. over the weekend that I'm not thrilled about. It wasn't mm. half. I mean, they needed the money. It was a lot of Rangers fans. sounded like half. There were a lot of money. There were a lot, a lot of, money. of Ranger yeah. fans. <laughs> I thought up one nothing, and you're in New York, and the game's tied 1-1, and there's just a beautiful give-and-go to Barkoff right in front of the net. And from there, the Panthers have done nothing but lose. Barkoff somehow missed. I was not expecting him to miss. Never expecting him to miss. And ever since Chris Cody took this photograph in New York, a lot of people are pointing out that the Panthers have done nothing but lose since Chris Cody attached his particular brand of stink <laughs> to the Panthers run. Mike Fuentes, dead to me. Unnecessary tweet. So it's your fault. I mean, hey, you, you enjoy your 37 retweets with that, buddy? <laughs> Whoa. Jesus. No, I hate him. Flashing out. I no. mean, it's a great tweet. No, you think he, he knew what he was doing there. He's like, oh, this is going to crush. This will be good. And what do you care about my feelings, though? Nothing? No. Th How's this going to make Chris feel? I bet that didn't, that didn't cross his mind. No. Jerk. 
do you feel like you're a jinx and a poison and that you're spoiling everything that felt only at road the games Panthers. don't don't do this to me i have a good home record i've been to a Were lot of games game this three? Year. i was, was at game three yeah. all right thank you <laughs> it's, it's my new kachuk jersey that's right. zero and two that uh-huh. thing's not getting worn tonight yeah. throw it away i'm like yeah. that too mm-hmm. you have the to my yeah. reinhardt jersey is oh two and one oh. not wearing that thing again mm. i almost burnt it you should Put it on the poll, Juju, at Levitard Show. Will you superstitiously toss the wearing of a jersey after you've lost an important game? We're going red, Captain C. Barkov, today. I'm going um, Old Faithful Kachuk Scherzi, because uh, that thing's about 10-2 yeah. and two this year. Yeah, that Back one's to the dubs. Yeah, yeah. You need with this hoodie, Jack right. <laughs> I find it fairly amazing that adult human beings in my employ think that a shirt they put on during a game <laughs> oh. changes oh, the result. Oh, but be oh, oh, but oh, 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 who called for that New York graphic game, Levitard? Who went to Tampa, you? Who who went to Tampa and they Missed lost? Missing sample size, 0-2. Oh they were overtime <laughs> losses, by the way. Shirts don't matter. That's just the overtime <laughs> numbers even and out for Florida. So my jersey's never <laughs> lost in regulation. <laughs> Chuck is out there, and the only part of his body that works is his navel. And you guys are like, I know, I'll get it out of my dresser, and this is what's going to win this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, you're well, and no one thanks me <laughs> when I pull the jersey. That's two zero and one. You should get a ring. I mean, I should get a ring. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, given given how much Chris sweats through some of that stuff, I imagine there is a ring around like the collar of it. <laughs> this is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. With only a few weeks left in the NBA playoffs, no matter which team you're rooting for, there's nothing like witnessing history in person. Use the Game Time app today and lock in your tickets to check out one of the teams that will lift the trophy at the end of the NBA Finals this season. Did you know that the prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off? It's true. I've seen it with my own eyes. Game Time also has killer last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concert, comedy shows, and more. The feature that I love the most on the Game Time app is the ability to see the views from my seat. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Or you can save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats for you. Game Time also has the lowest price guaranteed. With two taps, you'll see the all-in pricing, so there aren't any surprises at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DAN for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed.